Hey y'all, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush and I wanted to come in today and discuss top coats. Of course, this, these are my favorite top coats. These are the ones I use all the time. This isn't every top coat out there, obviously. You can always find something at Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart or Sherwin-Williams or something like that. But for the furniture painting and the smalls painting, and things like that. These are the ones I use the most and I wanted to just go over them a little bit. And first we'll start with these. I love this one is uh, by Junk Monkey and it has a little bit of a champagne sheen to it. So it's not exactly like getting, you know, painting a piece with a metallic, but it does give a metallic sheen in a sort of a warm neutral color to your pieces. I love this one. And this one is by DIY by Debbie's Design Diary. And it is liquid patina. The uh, And I'll have links for any of these if you want more info on them, I'll put that down there for you. But this is their liquid patina. It comes in clear, which we'll discuss later. And then it comes in dark and decrepit, which is this one. I don't even know if I can get it open right now my hands are kind of weak but the dark and decrepit is a top coat but it's also like an ager or a distressor sorry the light kind of blinds me an ager or a distressor and it really looks good if you say you wanted to put this whole piece you could put clear through the center and just use the dark around the edges or put a little dark around the edges just to deepen that and then put your other top coat on it but once you and you use it just like kind of like a glaze once you put this on you don't have to put another top coat over it so that's another really good one that's going to add a little bit of color to your to your piece one of my very favorite type of top coats are flat they're also known as matte or flat top coats and this one's almost empty. This is the Junk Monkey Banana Peel. And it's one of my very favorite uh, flats to put on. If you didn't want any sheen to this at all, but you want to protect it, and but you still want it to have that sort of chalk paint top look and you want it to be flat, then you would use, choose a matte or a flat top coat. Some of my very favorites are Banana Peel by Junk Monkey. Um, General Finishes High Performance Top Coat in Flat. I think it used to be called like Flat Out Flat. And that's what I have poured in here. One of these, it's not Tupperware, that's a branded face, but these plastic containers from the dollar store. And what's in here right now is my Gator Hide Sponge, which that's, we'll discuss that in a little while when we get to the satins. But I pour poured most of this down in here when I was working on some big projects and applied that to it and it's a really really good tough hard top coat in flat or matte and probably my very favorite is the Dixie Bell clear coat in flat these all do about the same thing this one is a very good price $13.99 for this 8 ounce which probably half of this would do this entire dresser. So if you want to use a flat top coat, then it still has that chalkboard kind of look to it and the things that you get from using the chalky style paints. So that makes two different kinds of top coats. The next and probably the most popular to tell you the truth is the satin top coat. I'm going to get several of these down. And this is Rust-Oleum Triple Thick Polyurethane 3X Complete Your Project Three Times Faster and they just call it Clear Satin Interior. It's not my favorite, but this is almost gone, so I didn't waste my money when I bought it. It was usable. And I like to use this on some of the wood product projects and things like that that my husband does rather than uh, and what I think I did use this on was maybe the legs to a project or something that he was working on, or maybe it was all the way back to a bench that we built, but it's satin. And satin is 
somewhere in between your matte and your gloss. If you don't want it too shiny, but you don't want it dull, you want a little bit of a gloss to it, then satin is the type of finish that you want. And satin is also really good for a lot of times if I'm going to use Gator Hide, which is Dixie Belle's toughest, actually the toughest that I know of, of any of them, uh, top coats, something must have been leaking on that, top coats, and what I'll usually do will be like maybe put a coat of the satin on it first to protect it. It's a little bit less expensive and, and it's a, a good base coat. And then I will sort of lightly sand that down and we'll discuss that when we go over the tools and then put a couple of coats, a big top on top of that. I'll, I'll not big top, but uh, gator hide. I'm sorry about that y'all. I will probably use gator hide on the top of here. But anyway, so there's a triple thick one. But the thing with that is you think you want this, and especially if you're doing a paint pour or something like that, but you really get your best top coat when you put on two to three very thin coats. Let it dry between each coat, sand it down a little bit, put your, you know, clean it off and then put your next coat on. You're gonna get more protection than putting a big thick coat on there. And when you have something like this one, it's also, um, I don't know if you've seen pieces that if you have your white piece and then the, it sort of yellows after it uh, after it ages a little bit or after you put your top coat on. You can even see how this one, I don't know if you can see from way up there, but I can see from here, um, which is amazing in itself. Anyways, that it's yellowed coming down the can. The, I don't know what, uh, this is Big Top by DIY. And I don't, to me it has a little bit of a satin. It's it's not a, it's not a flat and it's definitely not a gloss. So I would, I would put it in and I do put it in with the satin top coats, which is just your general everyday cop coat. If you want something to have, you know, to, for the light to catch it here and there and to have just a little bit of sheen, then satin's the way to go. And Big Top is uh, a good one. You do the same thing, two or three thin coats and then Dixie Belle makes one well I me mean, while I'm at DIY DIY the liquid patina remember we talked about the dark liquid patina for aging things earlier well they also have a clear and so this is the the clear one and it goes on to give a little bit of a patina and a little bit of a sheen to your piece but it also works like a top coat it's good for a decoupaging it's good for, which most of these are, but it's, I use this one a lot for decoupaging and, and for uh, top coating and just putting on some pieces that I've aged. I use it along with the dark and decrepit. And Dixie Belle also has just in their clear coat line, this one's satin. Like I said, I usually put a coat of this on before I put my gator hide on or if there's any type of reason you would wanna put a coat in between layers of your paint or anything like that. With DIY paint, it doesn't have a sealer. The, that's the uh, paint by Debbie's Design Diary. I was looking to see if I had just one sitting here. But anyway, if you with that one, there's no type of sealer already built into that paint. It's an all natural paint, clay based. And if you want to, put another layer on, it can, the wetness of the paint that you're putting on there, or from your brush or your Mr. Bottle or whatever, can reactivate the lower layers of the paint to where when you start to put this one on, it reactivates that one and can pull some of that one up. So one way to stop that is to seal in between. So you could use the satin clear coat for that. Dixie Bell is self-leveling and doesn't need that it has a sealer built in so you don't have to do that to do the colors but you're you know it's two different kinds of paint and the different layering ways and, and things that you would use on it so you could use this in between there and then these are both just gator hide different sizes this is by um dixie bell and this is water resistant so if i was gonna do a coffee i put it on the top of every kind of table i do and on top of dressers and and things that are going to get a lot of stuff moved around on them and you know where kids may sit a glass of water or something like that if i was going to do countertops 
or I don't know, things that, you know, are going to get uh, kitchen cabinets and that kind of thing. Things that get a lot of wear and care that you're going to want to wipe off and clean pretty often and things like that. It needs more protection and that's when you use the gator hide. And that has more of a satin finish. The next main finish, and I don't use this one very often, is gloss high gloss and I should have brought a resin in here but I'll discuss it even though I don't have one sitting here. This is a high gloss top coat that came in with the countertop kit. I have the videos for that where I redid my kitchen countertops. This is a high gloss top coat and it was a beautiful top coat that wasn't overly shiny but when you're going over uh, like a faux granite when you're making something like that you do want to gloss even though you think that you want it to look more flat the gloss works with it to make it look more like real granite. And then Dixie Belle, of course, in their clear coat has a gloss. So these are basically the, the same thing, but this was probably an oil base and, and this one is a water base. Same thing as everything else. You wanna put two to three thin coats rather than a heavy coat. And go ahead and do this one since it's sitting here. This is hemp seed oil, and this one is the Dixie Bell one. It's about half gone. This one I used on the farmhouse table that I did recently, and I think I have a video on that. But anyway, the hemp seed oil is food safe. It's really good if you're doing cutting boards and tabletops and all that kind of stuff. It dries to somewhere between a matte and a satin finish and it and a very hard finish and but it can also go over paint and it's perfect for if you if you've ever painted a piece here's two or three comments on that and you paint it with a really dark color like a black a lot of times no matter what top coat you use you're going to see a little bit of streaking of the top coat on top of your black piece with hemp oil especially over like Dixie Belle caviar which is their blackest black it comes to that hard finish but it doesn't leave any kind of streaking it sinks into the paint and gives it a hard durable finish and you don't ever have to redo it once you put it on there and it goes in and protects the piece the piece is protected and you get a finish just like you would with one of these and you're just rubbing it on and then you know giving it a day or two and then buffing it out so that's a very good product too. Some off the wall things real quick before we get to wax. Um, I get the, this is a spray shellac. I don't use it all the time, but this can be, like if sometimes I have a little bit of bleed through on the top of a piece right here, if some of the darkness of the wood was coming through, you can put on the, you know, Salvation Solution, I think is the DIY one, or Boss for Blocks Out Stain and Odors is the Dixie Bell one. And sometimes, sometimes, not very often, but sometimes it will still bleed through, like old grease that was on here, or oil will seep through that paint. And even with the water-based blockers, it's not quite enough, and shellac is what you need. And I use, this isn't about primers, but this is the one I used on here the other day because that's the one I had. This is a shellac-based primer. And while I try to stay with the more natural stuff, um, sometimes you need more. So I had a set of little dressers, the ones I painted the little, or not stands that I painted the little Fisher boy on. It kept having a grease bleed through. So I finally got this and just sprayed it on there two or three days in a row over that area, then painted back over it and now it's good. So this is a good, it's known as a top coat and it's good for spraying on little things that, you know, may be kind of hard to get to with your brush or your rag, but it's, you know, something to have in your repertoire and that's called Zinsser Bullseye Shellac. Um, I bought this one, which is a Minwax water-based polyacrylic, crystal clear finish, ultra fast drying, clear satin. And I 100% bought this to spray in between layers of DIY paint. Um, 
you don't have to do that. You, you know, when you get more experienced with that paint, you can learn to layer it and be more careful with your water and, and the wetness of it all and the reactivation and then just enjoy the look that you get from that. Or you can mist it, you can roll some of this on it in between and wait for that to dry and get to the next thing. Or you can just sort of spray it with this, be done with it and move on to the next coat. And that's the kind of girl I am. Sometimes I just like to get stuff done. And just as an FYI, Mod Podge, Mod Podge is a, is a sealer, it's a top coat. And if you're working on a little something, some candlesticks or a lamp or a jewelry box or something like that, and you're like, oh man, now I don't have any top coat. Girl, you probably got some Mod Podge, so <laughs> use it as a top coat. You can. This is an antiquing one, so it would probably yellow a little bit over that, but I've used it on projects and will continue to do so. Okay, there's, this is the only one that I know of. This is a clear matte spray wax. This one's Dixie Belle. And especially if you're doing fabric things or small things, you can just spray this on, wipe it over it, boom, you're waxed. It's the fastest curing, and I didn't talk about curing with this. Most of these, you're gonna be looking at a, oh, probably a couple of hours to dry, like to the touch. And you wanna wait at least a week or two, I would say two, I would tell my customers to, before you put like things on it. Say if you wanna put a doily on it and you know, some kind of pretty thing if it's a dresser wait a couple of weeks to do that. But before you start putting a bunch of heavy stuff on it and scooting stuff around and uh, leaving stuff in one spot for a long time, you're gonna need 30 days cure time on most any of this. So remember that with your pieces and telling, uh, you know, your customers if you do this for other people. But this one uh, cures in about, I think it's just a few days, maybe a week. Well, this says cures in six hours, but I would still give it that couple of weeks after that. So this is the fastest curing of the of all the products. So it would be done and one and done with that in a short amount of time. Talking about waxes, this is um, Dixie Bell Best Dang Wax and Clear. You may not even be able to see that, but it's it's white, but it dries clear. And I mean, they call it best dang wax because they really feel as if it's the best dang wax. And it is very good wax and you can see I use it all the time. My favorite wax though, and I have to be honest here, <laughs> this one's empty, is DIY wax. And it is, see if I can get some out of there. Not exactly white, it's that sort of the Vaseline type of a color but it, it's buttery smooth, it goes on uh, really easy, and I feel like it rolls on easier than, than the other waxes. So these are my go-tos for the wax and the clear and the DIY and the Dixie Belle Best Thing Wax. But they also have colored waxes, and both of them have colored waxes, and I just grabbed a, a few to show you. This is the Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax in Brown. And they're, and I love the colored waxes by Dixie Belle. They're softer than the Best Dang Wax. You're gonna get, you can even buff gator hide. So let me put that there when we talk about buffing and applications and stuff in a minute. You can uh, buff that Best Dang Wax to like a sheen like people used to do things, you know, elbow grease and a shine that looks like it has a gloss top coat when it's really buffed wax. But their colored waxes are fantastic for putting in grooves and crevices and going around edges and deepening the colors. I, I use this one all the time in uh, brown. They also have it in grunge gray. And these, I don't know why it reminds me of almost like a pudding consistency when it's down in, in the container, but it, uh, is very, very good. And I, and I use it all the time for, and here's the black for just accentuating the details on my pieces. So no matter which of the other top coats you use, you don't have to use wax to use colored wax. You can put 
any top coat that you want to on there and then go back in with your wax. There's two differences in the trains of thought here. And with DIY paint and wax, we're taught wax is always last. You never put anything on top of your wax because you may not get a good adhesion with that uh, other top coat or whatever on top of your wax. So always with the DIY wax, it's the very last thing you do. With Dixie Bell wax, which is a water-based wax, they say let your wax dry for 72 hours and then put Gator Hot over it. That's perfectly fine and it's gonna adhere. So that's two different trains of thought and I use both ways, but you know, I trust the companies and the manufacturers of these products to, to do what they say. And DIY and I believe Dixie Bell both have a white wax. And what I wanna say about using the colored waxes, the white waxes, the dark waxes, DIY has dark and black as well. There's not much in here. I love these little four ounce containers of it. It's $13. 33 on the big one like this and this says 1899 on the big one over the uh, Dixie Bell and 995 on the small one of the Dixie Bell but you want when you're using putting on your top coat of wax if you're wanting to use the dark wax and you know that you still I always recommend and I do put on a good coat of the clear wax first of whichever brand and you put it on and then you go back over and put your darker wax on. That way if you get too much of the dark wax, it's easier to wipe off and it's also easier to blend over. So even if I didn't put this first, I would put a top coat first. So you, you seal the piece one way or the other. Seal the piece with a top coat or seal the piece with your clear wax. Then go with your colored wax or your dark wax and put that on. And if you were to say get too much and you didn't like it, then you could just dip your little rag or brush or whatever in your clear wax and go back and erase the dark one. It's amazing how that works, amazing. And what I do, I love these little four ounce containers from DIY. I had a couple of them here, here's another one. And I don't know which ones that they're black and this is a homemade one I can tell there. Usually I write it on the lid. But anyways, I use those quite, a, quite fast and save these little containers because you can take this about half full of wax. This is four ounces. So say you had two ounces of wax in here, which is like four tablespoons. Then I put like a half a teaspoon of blue or a half a teaspoon of chocolate or, or whatever color, red, whatever color you want to make your own custom wax. And then you can put a custom wax over any of this in any color that you want and have it match your project. Very, very simple. I wanted to, let's see if I can move any of this out of the way, show you some of the tools I use. This is some of my husband's old t-shirts. Obviously, I've been removing dark wax with that one. I also use, and they have a larger one, but for my hand, this is perfect. And this one's called the Buffy. It's $41. This one's from Paint Pixie. And it's fantastic for buffing, buffing your wax at the end to get that sheen that you want to see. And that she makes a, I mean, she has a, a bigger one and I just don't have it in here with me that the size of like a shoe shine brush, but I love this one, especially for getting in the details. One other thing I was talking about the, like the buffing, I mean the Gator Hide sponge that's in there. I use these a lot. This is a car wash sponge. This one probably came from the Dollar Tree. Let me show you. Boom. Now that's the right size for my hand. And the point of it being is the holes in this type of sponge are very, very close together. So it's gonna, you dampen it, wring it out really, really good, and then dip it down in your Gator Hide or your other top coat, and you just glide it across. And it places it on there, gets around everything and makes it smooth, and it a, makes a good top coater. In between coats, 
I had mentioned that you want to sand. Now you don't necessarily want to use a sandpaper. If you do get a really fine one, this says fine, but I'm telling you, this is still too much grit. You're probably wanting say a 300 grit or something like that, or the equivalent to a 600 grit is a brown paper bag. And I use those a lot. Just save one when you go to the store sometime and you can lightly sand your piece between your top coat coats with that or this is two dollars and fifty cents this is a finishing pad from dixie bell and this even after you've sanded and you know got all your top coats on this is what you can buff that top coat to a sheen with and it's an awesome little tool i like to um, roll on my top coats on the top pieces like on the top here of course I couldn't roll all of this because you're you know going to be going around all the hardware and everything but on your sides and areas with no details that gets it on I use the little rollers but the one thing you want to remember about that let's see if this one doesn't fit this one either does it well maybe it will is you want to use the foam one so you have they have some that have uh, cottony looking stuff like this well I use those for applying thick paint but when applying a top coat I use the foam one and you can use one of these little roller trays I'll pick that up in just a minute or one of these thumb pails like this this one held what they call like a, a flat edger maybe and it's specifically meant for like painting behind your toilet it's a little flat thing and I couldn't find mine that's why I don't have it here but you could it's called a flat and I use that to put gator hide on the top of things uh, and absolutely love it and so that's an option but also you can get this little set at the Dollar Tree for one dollar. It's got the foam roller on it. It's got your own little rolling tray. You would just pour your gator hide in here. You had a very thin coat on it and pull. But the thing you want to remember also with your top coats is you're not wanting to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You're wanting to get it on there. See that you missed a little spot. So go back over it and then you need to be done, maybe twice at the most. But one little tip I've got here is you can slightly bend, not bend, but tilt your applicator and you wanna tilt it to where you're pushing down harder at the end of your row, like where your next thing is gonna be and lighter on your other one. So you're kinda gonna tilt it up. So that way you're not leaving an edge mark here in front and the edge mark that you are leaving behind it will then be captured by the next roll. So a dollar. So that's very, very good. Don't forget to stir them all. Don't shake them because you don't want air bubbles in there. And I keep my waxes and things in this grocery bag that I love. But I wanted to show you my wax brushes. And I use wax brushes probably 90% of the time. And this is another good thing that you can use for lightly sort of scuffing it up in between coats. And if you find the really fine one, this is like those gro grocery store scrubbies. This is from the Dollar Tree too and I just cut it in half. But that's really good for buffing or going in between the coats and, and you can get it at the Dollar Tree or Dollar Store or Walmart or whatever. These are my favorite wax brushes and I want to show you what's on them and you can't see nothing. This one says clear wax. I wrote it on there with a, a marker. This one somewhere I thought used to say white and then this one says dark and colored wax. And I've got it wrapped up in there to keep my bristles from going crazy. But I never wash these. This is, uh, I never wash these. So, you know, I wash all my other brushes as I use them. But with these, I just use as much of the wax on there as I can. And then I just put them up and I like to wrap them in these little pieces of t-shirt. 
Okay, this one says clear wax. I don't want to put wax on this yet because it's about to resist, but there, I mean, it would resist possibly my next paint on there. Let's see if there's anything here you can see right here. Okay, you would just dig in your wax container, get you some wax and apply it on there. Come back, let it sit a little while. Come back and buff that in with your rag or whatever you're using. Come back and buff it if you want to get it a good shine in there. And these are, are my main tools. I intend on having uh, these same exact brushes for the rest of my life. They're about $30 a piece, something like that. It's expensive, but you don't want, you don't have to have three but you don't want to ever put your clear wax one in your dark wax because once you do, it's it's going to put dark stuff on your on your piece. So I think that's it that I can think of on the top coats for right now. I hope that was helpful for you. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. We come back with new videos every Tuesday. I'm going to try to do more of these product focused videos for y'all in the future because I know whenever I was first starting out I really wanted to know more about the products and you know you and even if this is $13 and $13 is not a lot of money you don't want to waste it <laughs> I know you don't want to waste it because I don't want to waste it and sometimes you you do waste your money on things and all of these if I felt like they anything here was a waste of money I wouldn't have showed it to you everything here I use or have used and and I love them or, or I wouldn't recommend them so I will I sell DIY paint here in my store I sell Dixie Belle paint here in my store so I have all of these products here I could ship them straight to you I have affiliate links that I'll put below for the Junk Monkey products or any of the other ones I'll see if I can find a link for you but you know, I appreciate you. Bye.